This one thing will transform your hair forever. Let's get straight into making it. It is very easy, but contains quite a few ingredients. So get a pen and paper or just look in the description box. So first thing you want to do is turn the stove on and high. And we are going to start by putting in a handful of sprigs of rosemary. I really can't say the exact amount, but I would say about 10 sprigs of rosemary. Now you can also use dry rosemary, but for this specific recipe, I think fresh rosemary works the best. You can find it in your spice section in your local grocery store or on Amazon. And now I'm just putting some distilled water, not tap water, into the pot. If you do not have distilled water, you can go and buy one bottle. I'm sure it is very cheap wherever you live. You will need about a liter of water and that is because almost half of it is going to evaporate during the boiling process so you will be left with about half of that. So first thing you want to do is submerge all the rosemary in the water. If you want you can cut the sprigs in half to make it easier but I just did not have time for that. So after I submerged it, I made sure I put on a lid and you want to leave that boiling for around five minutes on high. And when you open it, this is what it looks like. It looks very foamy, almost like there's soap. No other ingredients were added. That's just what happens when you boil rosemary. And you start to notice that the water is getting like a little bit green and there's like a whitish sort of substance. Also, make sure you wash your rosemary before you put it in the pot. That's why mine was in a tea towel. I had just washed it. So anyway, you just move that around for a little bit and then now you reduce the temperature to like a medium low and then you're going to leave this to simmer for about 10 minutes again with the lid on. This is to ensure that we extract all the nutrients from the rosemary and actually because it is fresh and we are extracting it by boiling, we are not denaturing any of the nutrients that are in the rosemary. We are actually just extracting them. So now about 10 minutes later, this is what it's looking like. I turned off the plate and you can see it's just sitting. I put the lid on so it could cool down and while that's cooling, it is time to add some rice, okay? This is a separate part of the mixture. We're not putting it in that pot. It's a separate thing. So you can get a bowl or a pot, it doesn't matter. And you will need half a cup of rice. You can use any kind of rice except parboiled rice because a lot of the nutrients have already been boiled out. You just want any natural rice. If you'd like a recommendation for a specific rice, I would say use sushi rice because the OGs who created this recipe like to use a sticky rice like sushi rice. So now that has cooled down for a little bit, we are going to pour that into the rice. Instead of using distilled water, we are using the rosemary water that we just made and we are pouring it into the rice, okay? Now here, there is not much to do on this day because as soon as we extract all the water from the rosemary sprigs and everything, all you need to do is just mix it up. You can see it's clean, nothing has gone through the strainer. You will see one sprig of rosemary, that's because it was on my hand and there's absolutely no problem with that. You just want to swirl it around, mix it all around. You can do this while it's still a little bit warm. If you want, you can boil the rice in this mixture, but I prefer not to because I find that some of the nutrients get denatured. So all you want to do is let that sit overnight and this is what it's looking like the next morning you can see it's got like bubbles all over the top and the rice is kind of brown that's because it fermented a little bit overnight now if you want you can ferment it even for two days if you are in a very cold area and you feel like nothing happened but it's pretty warm where i am so a day is pretty fine for now so what you want to do now is to make this rice water rosemary rice water you want to make it become more cloudy because the cloudier it is the more like nutrients we have extracted from the rice and a little bit of that is of course just the starch from the rice that's why people assume that when you boil the rice it is better because of course you will pull out the starch and it will look very white but for me I find that I can get it out the best way and it works the best on my hair when I do it on rice that has not been cooked and when it is done you will not be able to your fingers if you put your hand underneath the water you just want it to be opaque and that's when you know it's done it'll take you about 10 minutes to get through all the rubbing of the rice so now what you want to do is put it into an airtight jar this is an extremely important step and that is because if you do not put it in an airtight jar it will go bad it will not ferment it's just going to rot it will smell bad it might even look like it might grow some mold on it so if you've noticed that after two days your rice water smells terrible you know that it's actually just gone bad it has not fermented 
So here we can see what that rosemary rice water looks like and it is time to add some fruit peels. Now the most ideal would be a pomelo fruit. I have literally never seen one of those in real life. The next best option is a grapefruit which I did not have on this day. So the third best option is an orange. So you can use an orange if you want. I get questions on whether you can use lemon on lime. I guess you could, but I have never seen it recommended by anyone who has actually been using this for years. So I would say the easiest and best thing you can use is just orange because it's widely available and pretty affordable. So once those peels are in, you want no bits of the inside of the orange, only the peels. We're gonna put it in a dark cupboard and we are going to leave it in this cupboard for a whole minimum of five days, okay? You can use it like this instantly, but the fermentation process adds a whole new thing to it. So this is now six days later, and you can see it looks basically the same. The orange peels are just as orange as before. The only difference is everything has kind of settled to the bottom, which you'll see nothing is wrong. We just need to mix it up. So what you're going to do here is first start by taking out the orange peels because we have no use for them. One good thing they also do is they really absorb the smell. They don't really add like vitamin C to the rice water, but what they really do is just add like a silkiness to the water. I can't explain it because you can just tell by touching the water and it really absorbs any of that like bad smell that you might not like. So it just makes the rice water smell like citrusy and makes it a little extra smooth. So now when we mix it up, you can see it's not even as brown anymore. It has like an orange tint and it looks kind of like weak tea or weak coffee. So this is basically the base of this mixture that we're going to be using on our hair. Now for the part we'll actually be using on our hair, I'm going to decant it into a spray bottle and I'm only going to fill it up three quarters of the way. That is because this mixture is extremely potent which is a good thing. So you can fill up the rest of the third with distilled water, okay? It doesn't have to be warm, it doesn't have to be cold, you can just put whatever you want. And now I'll be adding my essential oils into the spray bottle because that is what we're going to be using now. And we want it to be as fresh as possible without getting denatured by air or time or anything like that. So I'm putting about six drops of every essential oil, peppermint, lavender, and rosemary. And you might be thinking, didn't you put rosemary in the rice water? Why are you adding rosemary essential oil? That's because the benefits are slightly different. And in the essential oil, everything is extremely concentrated. So I like to do a double whammy when it comes to rosemary. But if you only have the sprigs or you only have the essential oil, you can swap that out. But exactly this recipe is the best way to go. So that is what it's looking like and it is time to apply it to the hair. Now note that yes, my hair is in a weird hairstyle. That is because my hair was in cornrows and I had just taken them down and I detangled every single section where there was a cornrow and just twisted it up so it doesn't retangle. But when it is time to wash, I will take these down. So what you want to do is start by focusing the product on your scalp first and then after you've massaged it into your scalp then you can run it down to the rest of the hair and the reason why I say this is because I don't want you to take any focus away from the scalp because a lot of these ingredients work best on the scalp because they stimulate hair growth right at the follicle and this is like the peppermint oil the tea tree oil the rosemary oil actually promotes nerve growth it has so many hair growth benefits that are backed by science it has been proven to be better or at least work just as well as 2% minoxidil, which is described prescribed by dermatologists and it works even better when it comes to stopping the hair from itching as well as promoting hair growth without side effects. Then of course, rice water has B vitamins, vitamin E, minerals, amino acids, and antioxidants. And so this is where the fermentation process comes in because once you ferment it, it starts to become even more potent. All the antioxidants and amino acids become more potent when they are fermented. And that's why we have so many ingredients, even in skincare, with fermented products like bifida or pitera, which is a popular ingredient in SK2, it's a facial essence. And so this just really concentrates everything. So if you were wondering where the rest of my rice water that left over was, that bit in the bottle, I actually put it back in the cupboard and I'm going to leave it to ferment for another two to three weeks. And this same bottle, there's gonna be some left. I'm also going to let it ferment out of the fridge. But when I feel like it has been fermented enough after maybe three more weeks, 
I will put it in the fridge. And so even after this five days, if you feel like for you, it has fermented enough and you don't want to ferment it any further, keep it in the fridge and it will not go bad. It will just stop fermenting and it will stay exactly how it is. Also, anyone can use this mixture. It doesn't matter if your hair is relaxed, whether your hair is bleached, it's not going to make your hair darker. It is just an amazing hair growth treatment. You can use it if you have bone straight hair, the blondest, straightest hair, or the kinkiest, coiliest hair, this will work for everyone. But in the event that it doesn't work specifically for you as an individual, please move on and try something else. If you find that you are allergic to something or anything like that, do not force it because not everything can work for 100% of the population in the world. That is why we are different. It is a good thing. But trust me, if your hair likes it, it will love it. So now I am going to go and wash my hair. So know that after you do this, there is one more step, not another ingredient, just another step. But after this one step, know that you do not have to change anything about your wash day routine. You do not have to try a new conditioner or a new shampoo. You will continue with your wash day as you always would with whatever deep conditioner or shampoo that you use. You will move on exactly like this didn't even happen. I like to do this on dirty hair. But if you want, you can do this right after your shampoo and deep condition, but you will have to rinse it out because the rice water does have a little bit of protein and it does have a little bit of starch. So it might make your hair feel a little bit hard. So please do not leave this in your hair. And if you want to know how often you can use it, I would suggest a maximum of once a week and a minimum of once a month. I like to be a happy medium. I do it around twice a month. I went under heat. That's the additional step. Go under heat for 10 to 20 minutes, especially if you have low porosity hair, then you can wash your hair and do whatever you want. So this is my hair the next morning and it felt unbelievably soft and smooth. And as you can see, very minimal frizz. I am a frizzy girl, okay? My hair is super frizzy and it just smoothed my hair shaft down. My hair feels amazing and my ends are still doing amazing after my trim. I am so excited to see what's gonna happen to my hair after a month of consistently using this. I also have an almost exact version of this, but an oil version. So if you'd like to see exactly how I make the oil version, all you have to do is click the video on the side of the screen right there. And if you wanna see more videos like this from me, of course, hit my face to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.